Oh. Ah, there we go. Hey, friends. Today's story is about July 30th, which, when this was recorded, was last Thursday. And if you think that sounds like rain, that's because it is. All right, July 30th. In my last video, I sort of promised that I would try to get a zoomed-in still shot of a bird called East Asian Crane. I think it has another name like Red Crested Crane or something, but the ones around here don't have much red in them. I decided, I mean, why not just do it now? I gotta get up out of this chair. No, not, th not this. I usually sit on the chair that has the tripod. <laughs> I gotta get up out of this chair, go out the door and do it. I'm gonna get a picture of those things. Here's how my plan went. The first part of my plan for the day was to go from home here and then go up here to this thing. Now it says Tongwu Park. Tongwu means pet. A pet park. There's a fence around it which is about chest high and you can get your dog or your cat or your Burmese python or whatever and and take it there to jump through the tires and go across the balance beam and all this stuff. It'd be kind of funny though, wouldn't it? Oh, nice snake. Hey, I saw your snake a minute ago. Why is he so fat? And where's my dog? <laughs> yeah, you can imagine something like that. All right. All right, so I went past the pet park and parked at the bottom of the diagonal thing. Then here you see this diagonal line. This unnamed road here is level with the flat plains of, of the west. It, everything's flat here. There's no mountains or anything for more than a half hour going east. But this thing goes up three meters to the bicycle path which I think you would call a levee or maybe a dike. I think dike means it's made of concrete, but this is made of soil, so it's a levee, I think. I got about halfway up that ramp to, to the bicycle path and I saw that sign that says, beware of snakes. And I got out my camera, I turned it on and it said, no memory card. Oh, again. So I used a GoPro camera to take a picture of the sign and I think one other picture from the bicycle path. And you can see white dots where the birds are, but you can't zoom with the GoPro. And you basically can't do much with my GoPro because the touch screen is broken. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. So I went back down to the gazebo thing. It's kind of a gazebo there near where I parked. And <laughs> Boy, do I have a funny gazebo story to tell you sometime. So I sat in the, in the gazebo thinking about, beware of snakes. I've only seen one snake in 17 years of living in this area. And there's no way it's a wild snake from, from around here. It's a banded snake. Red, black, white, black, red, black, white, black. You know, there's that thing about the coral snake. There's another kind of snake that looks like a coral snake and they have a saying, you know, yellow and black wouldn't hurt Jack. Black and red can kill you dead. Yeah, whatever. I, I don't know what it is. I stay away from 
any snake. So I was, you know, kind of scoffing that sign a little bit. And then I, th I thought about it and thought, why not just go home? It's only a minute. It's only a minute or two. So I did it. I went home, got my SD card, and put it in the camera. And but I decided to take this road going west to go toward the, the beach. Somewhere along here, there was a dead snake in the road. A coiled up dead snake in the road. And here I was scoffing at the, at the sign. But then I guess there really are snakes around here. I decided to take kind of a main road that, that ends up closer to the bridge where I usually take pictures of the sunset. It's kind of a little little area to park there. There's a guy with a plastic bag full of some kind of grain and he was scattering it all over the, the bicycle path and there was this huge flock of, I guess, pigeons that were eating it. And as I approached slowly, he left. But the pigeons were still there. I didn't want to disturb them, so I went very slowly with the camera on. As I approached, they all took off at the same time, and I was able to, to, to get a recording of that. But one, one little bird stayed behind. And I even, I think I even told him, you know, thanks for staying. Thanks for sticking with me, buddy, or you know, something like that. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. Anyway, I walked back toward the snake sign, maybe almost two thirds of the way. And it was a long walk because I have a, a problem with my feet. If you don't know, that's called a drop foot. The tops of my feet are numb. And there's a certain angle. I can't lift my feet this way. I can push down, I can go left and right, but I can't lift my feet this way. So I have to walk very carefully so I don't trip. And that's what happens when you trip. So I, I came to a, a place where there was kind of an edge and I could see the bird. Zoomed in, got a picture. Perfect. All right, so there weren't any others around, so I turned around and went back. Long walk, especially for my condition. And then when I got to my motorcycle, I was like, ah. Oh, feels so good to sit down. The next bird thing I wanted to do was check out this place that I've seen many times. Okay, here's the bridge where I usually take sunset pictures. And then you go up here. And then right here at the corner of this green area, there's a sign that says Sandpiper Reserve. And I've passed the sign many times and I've never been in there. And so I turned to go in and this is what I saw. So that was closed. But I know that if I go up here and come back and follow these trees, 
right when you start seeing this company at the corner here there's a bird blind but they don't call it sandpiper reserve they call it wildlife reserve right at that corner i found the bird blind and drove in and way in they have these pedestals with glass boxes with models of the birds made so you know what to look for or you can read about them and so I went up to the second level the upper floor and they have holes that you can look out to see the wildlife and the holes are fairly big. I mean, if you have one of those megaphone looking telephoto lenses or something, it'll easily fit through there. You can stick your head through there too. I looked out and I could see the, the swamp and the whole thing was mangrove trees and no wildlife. Now, it was kind of windy, so you can't really hear me very well, but I said, Wow, look at all the wildlife. Nice. All right, so across from the wildlife reserve, there's that company that it's kind of like the beacon that tells you the wildlife reserve is here. They always have beautiful flower bushes outside. I mean, almost all year round. Maybe they're made of plastic. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I just stopped and took some pictures of those. And those were, as always, really nice. So I continued two intersections down. Here and then turn here. And here is the GoGoRo Go station, where I wanted to switch batteries. Something was going on with concrete because back here they're building something and this whole road right here was a big line of cement trucks waiting to pour, I guess. I got my batteries got back out on the main road. Further down the road, there's a really new bridge that is cool. But, as sometimes happens, the file recorded by my mounted cameras on my motorcycle was corrupt. So, no cool bridge for you, sorry. Further down that road, on the peninsula, there was another gazebo, and the, 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 off the road you kind of go up a little bit into the gazebo. And so I sat down there for you know, take a little break. And there was a plaque there, and, and I got a picture of that. And there was one guy across the road, a taxi driver parked under a tree in the shade with his door open and his feet on top of the door right above the rear view mirror, taking his siesta. Other than that, I never saw another human on that road until just before I got to the apex, the, the very end, the point, I heard this roar behind me. I looked in the rearview mirror and I was like, Huh? A carry logistics truck. What's he doing out there? 
Carrot Logistics is like Pelican or HCT, FedEx, DHL, UPS, Tucubin, Tucubin. What was he doing there? There's nothing there. Nobody lives there. There's a lot of fish farms. And so somebody comes to take care of the fish, I guess. But nobody actually lives there. The road doesn't even have a name for the little roads in the middle. Well, anyway, the, the fun part is you can see from the rear camera, the rear camera on my motorcycle, you can see the truck coming closer and closer and closer and then suddenly get farther away because I, I gunned it. <laughs> when I discovered him, I, I thought, oh, okay, I better speed up. He probably thought it was funny too because I was just moseying along and then he comes up behind me and I'm like, ah! <laughs> All right. So I got to the, to the point there and he was able to, to pass, not even close to me. It wasn't dangerous. There's was nothing wrong there. But the interesting thing about being at that point is that that bridge where I usually take pictures of the sunset is actually not far away but it's virtually very far away because in order to get there you have to go all the way back to the main road cross a bridge and then weave through a lot of stuff and then out to the ocean and then you're on the bridge so it's kind of cool and then going along the the south edge of the peninsula I took pictures of the other side from an angle that basically nobody knows because nobody goes there. So sometimes I've taken pictures there and shown them to people and then people are like, this is Anping Old Fort, but where were you? I've never seen this area. I was like, I was across the river, what are you doing there? taking pictures to make you ask me where I was. All right, so that was fun. Then there's a ramp. There's also, this is a dike. This is a concrete dike. And then there's the main road down below that has a name. So I was up on the dike to get better pictures. But when you get closer to those that, that whole mess of houses, there's a diagonal ramp that goes down. Okay. Now, the fun thing you can do with a gogoro is you can go uphill as slowly as you want because it doesn't have a CVT belt to grab. If you try to go very slow with most scooter type motorcycles uphill, you'll burn the belt up. But Gogoro has a gear belt. So it's always running at the same ratio. So I, I practiced a few times and I got down to five kilometers an hour. I could go, you know, and, and go up that thing. It was really fun. And that file got corrupted, too. It's like Murphy's Law. You know, you drop the butter with the toast or whatever, and it always falls with the butter side down. It's like anything you want, the file gets corrupted. Don't care, don't care, don't care. Oh, this is the one. All right, so I festooned my way through all those houses, just looking around. A lot of those houses are like 50 years old, but there's some new houses in there too that are very nice. But it's really crowded and there's nothing around it. 
They never kept building. It's just there. It's kind of a nice little secluded area. And so, that was the sunburn day. Man, I, I was a redneck. I was a red arms, red everything. Red neck, red everything. I'll be out in the backyard, drop 350 V8 in a pickup truck and get in there and fire up that son of a bitch. Well, not really. <laughs> All right. Next video will be quite short, but there is a link to this one, which is pretty funny. I will tell the story of how this happened and how this happened and how that happened. I really hate gravity. <laughs> All right. Next video will be pretty short. See you soon. Take care, friends, and be safe out there. The rain stopped.